Okay, so our last video, we created a Google form, and now we want to do stuff with the results. So this is my Google Forms. I'm going to open one that I know that I have results for. There we go. Okay, so when it first opens, before we had these things up at the top, we had questions, responses, but we didn't have anything right here. It was blank because we hadn't published our forms and nobody had responded to them yet. This one, I've already had people respond to, so I've had 31 responses, so that tells me right here. So if I click on the response page, and it has this. Now, this was for a project, so I had, like, you know, who was in your group, what kind of project are you going to do. This wasn't a multiple choice. This isn't the best um, for actually looking at results, but it's going to show you how to find those. So, okay. So if I click on the response, I get this overview thing. I can look at the summary by question, individual, and uh, that's all fine and good, but we want to go right up here to the top right. It says view responses and sheets. If I click on that, it automatically creates a spreadsheet for me with all my answers. Da, da, da. This one is not multiple choice. This is going to be kind of a pain. So I'm not going to actually use this. I just wanted to show you where to find that. So instead, I'm going to go here to my example survey responses. So before I had had three questions. My first question was, do you have any siblings? The next one was, do you prefer cats and dogs? And then the last one was, what kind of food would you prefer at lunch? So here are my responses, uh, my pretend responses. Normally, if this were real, you would have like a timestamp column right here. Okay. So the first thing I want to do, so I have these, and this is fine. But what I want to do is I want to actually have counts for these, right? So what I would probably do before I do anything is I want to make a copy of this because you never want to do math with the, with the actual data that you collected because you don't want to accidentally change things. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything, control C. I'm going to go down here. I'm going to create another sheet. You can rename it. I'm going to call it work or calculations or whatever. This is the data. And it'll say normally like responses. Okay, so then I'm on my work page. I'm going to click somewhere. I'm going to do control V. So now I have all these. The next thing I want to do is I want to make some space in between here. So I'm just going to click. I'm going to drag these over a little bit. So just looking at the yes and no. And this top one, this is just like a header. I'm going to make that bold. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to put these in order because I want to be able to count. Okay. So I'm going to highlight everything. I'm going to go to data. And I want to sort range. I don't want to short sort sheet because that's going to sort everything on there. I just want this one column. So I'm going to put sort range. I'm going to do A to Z. So now notice it's in alphabetical order. I have no's and I have the yeses. So I'm going to put answer, number, and wait. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to know how many of these there are. So I could count, but why? We're in Excel. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to put total. <clears throat> Excel and Google Sheets will count for you. Like, that's the whole point. So if I go equals and I put count, and I open parentheses, if you highlight, if you hit equals count, highlight all the stuff, it's going to count all of the cells with values in them. So if you had, like, empty spaces or whatever, um, it doesn't care. It'll skip those. And it just only counts how many responses there are. Okay. What? Oh, maybe it's count for numbers. <sighs> Oh, okay. Equals, is there another one that I could use? Count. What is this? Okay, yeah, so count is the numeric values. Count A is the number of values. Okay, let's try that one. Count A, open parentheses. Close parentheses. Yay, okay, so there are 17 of them. We need, we need that. Now this, so I have two answers. I have a no and I have a yes. No and yes. 
and I want the number of no's and the number of yeses, well, I can go in and I can count one, two, three, four, five, six. I can count these, or I can make it do it for me. So I'm going to go equals count A, open parentheses. I'm going to highlight only the no's. Da, da, da. There are six of them. I don't want this suggested autofill. Now I want to count the yeses. So I go equals count A, open parentheses, highlight all the yeses. Close parentheses. Ta-da. So there are 11 of those. So then for my weight, because I'm going to be drawing a tree diagram, I want the number over the total. So that's going to be equals 6 divided by 17. This one is equals, click on my 11, divide, click on my 17. So on my tree diagram, if I draw that first set of branches, my no is going to have a weight of 0.35. My yes is going to have a, a weight of 0.65. Now you can, one thing you could do is you can reduce this down to like two decimal points just to make it easy. Oops, there we go. Okay, next I'm going to do it with the next one. I'm doing the exact same thing. So first I'm going to move food over um, for cats and dogs. I have my answer number weight. I'm going to copy that, paste it over. I like copying and pasting wherever I possibly can um, just because it makes it faster. So my answer is I have cats, dogs, and neither. I think that was supposed to be cats. So now I want to come here. I want to highlight those. I want to go to data, sort range, alphabetic. Da da da. Okay, so cats, dogs, neither. Over here, we do the count A. And I'm going to highlight the cats. I don't want that autofill. Now I want to count A. I'm going to highlight all the dogs. And neither. I can do the count A or I can just count. I see that there are three of them. I'm just going to type three. Okay. For their weight, it's the same amount. So there are 17. So I'm going to go equals this divided by this equals this divided by that. And equals this divided by that. Those are my weights. Again, I can make this to where there are two decimals just to make it easy. Go. And then I would do the exact same thing with, with the food column. So once I do that, then I have all of the weights that I need and I can create my tree diagram. So um, this one, so Microsoft Excel, oh, drawing. Usually, oh, okay. Microsoft Excel will let you actually draw things. Okay. This one is kind of weird. I guess you have to like, I don't know. Yeah, sometimes I prefer Excel. But okay, so if I made my tree, so there's that, there's that. Maybe this is um, yes or no. This is my little siblings one. And then I would go through, so I might put in a label up here so that I would know what that is. And I would go through, and I know it's, okay. I know that my no was a 0.35, my yes was a 0.65, so I would put that in here. So 0.35. 0 0.65. I want to save and close just for now. So now I have this drawing. Uh, okay, here it is right here, and I can move this around wherever I want it. So I would put it kind of down a little out of the way. So once you have your weights, then you can create your tree diagram. And you can create that here in Excel, or you can do it by hand, or you know, Google Sheets. Or you can do it on a slide. It just depends on, on how you're turning this in. But that's what we're going to do. So you take your responses. You copy them over into a separate sheet. You sort them. You count up how many of each answer there are, divide that by the total number of responses, that gives you your weight. You do that for each of the three levels, 
and then you create your tree diagram. Yay, and we did all of that by going to our Google form, clicking on our responses, and creating a Google spreadsheet with the response, or Google Sheets with the response. Okay, so that's our video.